في هذه المزرعة العمودية الداخلية ايرو فارمز لزراعة الخضار الورقية بمدينة نوورك بولاية نوجيرزي والتي لا تعتمد على الشمس والتربة هناك العنصر الأساس فيها الأبراج الزراعية الذكية التي تبنى على نظام الوحدات بقياسات وارتفاعات مختلفة داخل العنابر أو المستودعات فما هي أهم التقنيات التي تميز هذه الأبراج؟ Yeah, each one of our growing towers is really a living computer. There's sensors, there's monitors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a whole control. So we think about the lighting, the misting of the roots with the nutrients. We're thinking about how we create the perfect environment for the plants. And here, we're seeing some of the initial plants in the number of days. This is probably about four days. Mm -hmm. So we went from the seeding to the germination to now to the growing. And we're creating you know, the right level of spectrum of light, the intensity, the frequency. Uh, we're delivering the right kind of nutrients it needs at this stage. And we're able to create, you know, thinking about all those inputs, a faster growing process and have a better product at the end. We like to think of ourselves as the apple of farming, right? So we've built the hardware, we've built the growing set towers, the, the, the mechanical part. We've developed the software, the growing algorithms. But what makes Apple so special is the operating system. It's how the two work together. Mm -hmm. And we think that's very much the approach we've taken with growing. So it's more secure, it's more uh, consistent, and allows us to understand how to optimize both in, when we think about the whole equation. The sun and the wind. Here you have the light and the fans. What the fans has to do here? So you think about the fans, what we're doing there. So mm -hmm. a few things. One, you can think about uh, the idea of just even stressing the plants so we can help harden the plants. Mm -hmm. So again, they have a very much a pampered life. We're giving them exactly what they need. So we stress them a little bit with some air movement. The other part though, is that we're actually able to distribute CO2 so we can have more effective photosynthesis. So actually in this environment, we have supplemental CO2 higher than the normal levels. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the factors that we can have more effective photosynthesis. What do we have here inside this black box? So this is what we call a drip pan. And this is actually where the misting uh, the is misting. happening. So how we deliver the nutrients, it's being dispersed in a mist. And so we're able to give you know, the specific droplet to the root. And we're looking at the, even down to the micron size of that droplet to see and how to enhance the absorption rate. And we're constantly monitoring the macro and micronutrients as well. Mm -hmm. So again, this is about how we can be more targeted with that and more precise. And then thinking about, again, that plant nutrition, plant health, and how that translates into human health as well. ما هو الفرق بين الزراعة مباشرة في المياه والزراعة بالرذاذ؟ فما هي فوائد رش جزور الشتل برذاذ المياه؟ So the benefits of aeroponics are several fold. Uh, one is what roots actually need is oxygen, right? And so this is one of the ways by just simply misting it and actually having air there as well, we are actually able to enhance the growing uh -huh. process. If it's sitting in water, growers have to oxygenate the water as well. So it's another step, another cost, another level. And this allows it to what the you know, roots actually want. Because it's a mist, we actually actually be more targeted in terms of that water delivery as well as the nutrient delivery. And so it's much more efficient. It's much faster as well. So we're able to grow and have more biomass in a shorter period of time. So it has some significant advantages for us. Mm -hmm. We talk about this being really the heart of the growing system. So we have uh, the power, we have our PLCs, and it's very elaborate in terms of how we integrate those sensors. For example, that's a sensor. This is a sensor there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, But so that, what the sensor is sensing now? So temperature, humidity, there's a number of factors, CO2, mm -hmm. so there's a number of things that we're able to utilize in the whole entire environment to make sure we're monitoring understanding the actual uh, environmental aspects as well.